Good evening, everybody. Brian Newberg here from GoldenBlack.com, live in Mackey Arena, uh, competing for your attention tonight with both the White Lotus and Sunday Night Football in the ratings. Uh, I will definitely be the most entertaining of those three options. I promise you that. This is your rap video following Purdue's 89-70 to Big Ten opening win over Minnesota. It is brought to you once again by our friends at the Purdue Union Club Hotel. Thank you so much to them for their continued support. It is profoundly appreciated. We will dive right into this, and I will, I will keep this short, I will keep this sweet, and I will make all the same empty promises I make at the start of every one of these videos in that regard. 89-70, to 70, Purdue over Minnesota. Not a shocking outcome. You know, Purdue is playing like one of the better teams in college basketball. Minnesota is uh, not. They're very young. Uh, their front court did not exactly profile. It's the sort that would give Zach Eady a lot of problems. Uh, they're young. They're, they're, they're smallish. Um, didn't help that Trayton Thompson, who's at least seven feet tall, albeit 210, 215 pounds, wasn't here for them tonight. Uh, but the game, from a final score perspective, went about as you would have expected it to. Purdue wins by 19. Uh, I'm not sure at any point in time during this game did you ever worry about Purdue, you know, kind of laying an egg here in their first Big Ten game in Mackey Arena with this group. But I think the story of the game, once again, is what Zach Eady's been able to do. The Canadian is playing like an All-American. And it, it's not just the dominance. The dominance is, is, is a big part of it, but it's the consistency. It's every game from here on out since that bizarro world 14-point game against Milwaukee that didn't even matter because minutes were being limited. It was an outlier sort of game, and not a single play in that game mattered toward the outcome, really. Ever since then, he's been 20 or more points every single game. That's seven games in a row. Um, this is just some Shaq level stuff at scale here that Purdue is getting from Zach Eady here in terms of his dominance around the rim, the way he's attacking matchups, the way he's attacking the rim, you know, things like that, the way he's attacking the glass. He's been the best rebounder in the country so far, if you ask me. I, I, I've not seen the other 364 teams in college basketball, um, but there's not a better rebounder in college basketball right now than Zach Eady. I don't know what the numbers say, but um, he's been unbelievable on the glass. And, you know, tonight he out-rebounds Minnesota by himself, 22 rebounds, eight of them offensive. Minnesota gets 21 rebounds by itself. He's winning the battle of attrition that Purdue wages against opponents here from a fouls perspective, from a physical fatigue perspective. He's been great offensively. He's been really good defensively. He's been elite on the glass. He's been consistent. He's been a leader. He's making his free throws. He is protecting the rim on defense. He is making all the right decisions, all the right passes in the post. He is everything, you know, Purdue possibly could have asked him to be this year. Probably and then some. Uh, whether or not they'd say that or not, I don't know. You always want your you always want more from your best players. I'm sure there's probably something in there that they probably would like a little more of, but I'll be damned if my eye is trained well enough to see what it is because he's been unbelievable this year, uh, and he's the single biggest reason that Purdue is, you know, surprisingly here eight zero and number five in the country and about to move up again and looking like a team that's going to make some noise in the Big Ten here. Um, so that's that. That's obviously the big takeaway uh, from this game. It's not a new takeaway because this is going to get to the point where it's like last year with Jaden Ivey, where I'm just going to skip right over that stuff. I'm just going to skip right over telling you after every game, Jaden Ivey's really good. Um, I ought to call a moratorium on just talking about Zach Eady at all after games, because you see it, you know. I don't have to tell you after every single game that Zach Eady was really good. But I probably still will. Um, the other, obviously beyond Zach Eady, you know, Purdue really kind of flexed its offensive muscles uh, here tonight. I, I Minnesota is not a great team. Uh, they're really young. They're really inexperienced. Better days are ahead for them, I'm quite certain. So you don't want to – nobody's going to beat their chest over what happened here tonight. But I think you're seeing more of what Purdue as a program has transitioned into from an offensive perspective where the names change, the faces change, the skill level doesn't, the matchups don't and the approach doesn't. I think that Purdue has, is becoming one of the better offensive programs 
in college basketball, to be honest with you. That, that might sound like overstatement. Maybe. I don't know. But I didn't think Purdue played great tonight. Um, and they still get 89 points. And they still shoot 51% from the floor. Um, Zach Eady carried them offensively, 31 points. But they turned this game with three long jumpers in the span of about a minute and 20. The first being a transition three from Brandon Newman. The second one being a transition three from Fletcher Lawyer. And the third being what I guess was a long two by Brandon Newman off, off a curl cut and a half court set. I thought it was a three. I guess it was a two. My mistake. Um, but it just it showed you that as much as Purdue is defined by Zach Eady, their ability to just dump a bunch of three-pointers on you in a very short period of time remains in place. Also, you know, you have a four position here. Caleb first is two for two from three tonight. Mason Gillis, when he's playing, obviously is a big shot maker for Purdue. You just have so much skill around Zach Eady again. And this team is executing offensively at a level that I'm not sure anybody could have realistically expected right away, given how young they are in the backcourt, how new they are in their roles, stuff like that. But you know, Fletcher Lawyer, Braden Smith came in here like veterans. And, uh, you know, Fletcher Lawyer is going to be a star at Purdue. Braden Smith's going to be a star at Purdue. Fletcher Lawyer was a star tonight. 20 points, 8 assists, 0 turnovers uh, in his 8th college game. Uh, in his first Big Ten game, um, it's pretty good. It's really good. And a lot of that stuff came at the rim. A lot of that stuff came in the lane. This wasn't him just shooting 12 threes and having one of those nights where he makes seven of them or whatever. This was an all-around scoring game, an all-around offensive playmaking game. Just another reminder of what Purdue has in store here these next couple years with this backcourt that's going to be in place for the long haul here most likely. And, uh, you know, this is the third game this season where Purdue has had a different player have seven or more assists in a game. I challenge you not just because I want to give you something to do on a Sunday night because I know you have nothing else to do, but also I don't want to go through the trouble myself um, because I like outsourcing things to people that I don't want to do myself because I'm just that selfish, I'm just that narcissistic, I'm just that lazy. How many seven-plus assist games has Purdue had for an individual in like the last 10 years? It might be a single digit. Um, because it's just not, Purdue very rarely has that sort of singular uh, stat compiler in that particular category. Uh, normally things are, are decentralized, forwards regularly, Purdue and assists, you know, stuff like that. It's normally this guy's got three, this guy's got five, this guy's got four, whatever it might be, and it all adds up to a pretty good game. But I think now that Purdue is executing at such a high level from an offensive perspective and has such skilled guys, I think you're going to see more of these games where Ethan Morton gets nine, Fletcher Lawyer gets eight, Braden Smith gets seven, which are the three examples from this season thus far. And, you know, Fletcher Lawyer does it against no turnovers tonight. Ethan Morton, I think, against, was it West Virginia or Gonzaga? I don't remember. But he had nine assists and no turnovers. You've just got so much offensive skill on this team, so much offensive savvy that you just have the building blocks of another really good offensive basketball team here. And the assist numbers, you know, sort of sort of reflect it. Um, but, I, you know, again, this game is just Purdue flexing its offensive muscles with the three-point shooting, the, the, the Zach Eady dominance, the assist numbers, so on and so forth. Um, Brandon Newman, you know, very quietly comes in, has another really good game um, off the bench for Purdue. When you have that sort of guy who comes in with that sort of mentality and he 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 makes shots, that's the sort of guy with that second unit that can really change a game for you. Um, just got a lot of really nice offensive pieces on this team. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Trey Kaufman Ren's a guy who can come in and go get you buckets. This is a guy who on a lot of teams would already be a featured go-to level scorer, averaging double double figures in scoring, averaging more than 20 minutes a game, whatever it might be. Here, Purdue has this good problem to have it forward. Where Mason Gillis, Caleb First, Trey Kaufman Ren are all arguably st starting level players at a lot of places. 
at Purdue under a lot of circumstances, any one of those guys would be starting, playing 25 minutes a game, 30 minutes a game, whatever it might be. Purdue, again, has too many good players out of position. That's something that coaches have to manage, but that's something that also speaks to the culture of your program is when you get guys who are in this for something bigger than themselves, they kind of get it. may not like it, but they get it. And, you know, Purdue needs that to hold all year long the same way it, it did seemingly from the outside looking in last year. Um, but obviously with Mason Gillis being out tonight, that opened more minutes for for first and Trey Kaufman ran, and both of those guys deliver, totaling 20 points and eight rebounds. When your second and third guys at their positions, you know, arguably come in and, and total 20 and eight for you in their first Big Ten game of the season, you're pretty deep and you're pretty good. And, you know, Purdue is pretty deep and Purdue is pretty good. Um, beyond that, you know, tonight, the only blemish on all of this uh, tonight, and again, Minnesota is not in a great place right now competitively really young again better days are ahead from them for them you know things like that they're even a little bit shorthanded um but you know purdue giving up 43 points in the second half i know purdue was playing with a comfortable lead i know minnesota was making a lot of the shots that purdue systematically wants you to have to make uh in terms of those challenge twos those those driving runners over a over a back tracking seven foot four guy things like that i know purdue was getting every rebound but still you know, 43 points in the second half on 51% shooting, whatever it was from Minnesota, at least from a surface, doesn't look great. You don't want to make too much of it just because this was a this was a one-sided game. And again, Minnesota, much like Florida State, was making the shots you want teams to have to make to beat you. Uh, so part of that is giving Minnesota more credit than you take away from Purdue. But this was the first time tonight in the second half I thought Purdue looked really vulnerable defensively. Um, just something to watch. Uh, when Purdue gets against better opponents, you know, and they just beat Duke and Gonzaga. So here I am just grasping for things to talk, to talk about here, about their defense, you know, being a little bit vulnerable in the second half. Um, so I, I can't say wait till they play somebody good when they just beat a bunch of good people. Um, but that's kind of something to watch here just to make sure Purdue keeps on its P's and Q's here defensively because that's been one of the stories of the season for Purdue and arguably the biggest reason that Purdue is is where Purdue is right now. You know, Zach Eady could be having the season Zach Eady's having. The freshman guards could be having the season they're having. Purdue collectively, offensively, could be having the season you're having. The rebounding could be the way the rebounding is. But if Purdue hasn't been so good defensively as they've been so far, improbably, Purdue is not where it is right now. That has been an enormous revelation for this team thus far. Just have to stay on top of it. Make sure this is your normal as opposed to your, your uh, month-long outlier to start a season. Uh, something that doesn't endure as more and more people get you on film, things like that. But just bared mentioning that Minnesota had a lot of offensive success in the second half. Um, just in the interest of balance, uh, in the interest of both sides -ism, I'm going to talk about the good stuff, but also talk about the bad stuff. There's not been a lot of bad stuff uh, to talk about with this Purdue team thus far. They're off to an incredible start. I don't think anybody could have foreseen this coming. You're 8-0, you're fifth in the country. You're 1-0 in the Big Ten. You should be 2-0 in the Big Ten after Nebraska. You got an opportunity here to kind of ease into this. Um, which Purdue probably deserved because you had to go from Portland to Florida State for the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Um, but can't, much, can't ask much more of this Purdue team what you've gotten so far. Uh, Purdue has to be pretty happy uh, with where it is right now. Um, so with all that being said, I will let you set your DVR, DVR. I will let, it's been a long weekend. I will let you uh, get back to the football game, whoever's playing. I will let you punch up the White Lotus. Um, and I will go back to writing all night, uh, both from this game, my column tomorrow. It's been a wild weekend. Uh, all day I was covering basketball recruiting yesterday while Tom and Alan covered the Big Ten championship game. Basketball game today, I've got all this recruiting stuff to write. I've got my column for the morning. Tom and Alan and I have a bowl thing to cover tomorrow. The transfer portal opens tomorrow. So it, it's, it's a college sports holiday tomorrow. So 
I, I cannot implore you enough to stay tuned into goldenblack.com. We are going to have a ton of stuff on our site. For a limited time only, $1 for your first year of membership to our new platform on On3. Please check it out. From Mackie Arena, that's all I've got from Purdue's 89-70 win over Minnesota and probably a lot more than I should have had. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. I will talk to you guys again this week when Purdue plays Hofstra. I have no idea when that game is. I will wake up one morning and I'll find out, oh, hey, there's a game tonight, and I'll go to it, and I'll do this all over again. So until then, have a good night, everybody.